Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 411. Each week we meet here to review the uh, questions asked and answered on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, with us tonight we have David Rosam, a leading internet marketer from uh, down yonder in West Sussex, uh, in the sunny coast of the UK. You, you had a cliff fall down this week, uh, David. We did. Well, we we're very lucky that you weren't under it. Uh, we don't have any cliffs around here. Uh, we have, have some in East Sussex, but we don't have any in West Sussex. Uh -huh. But I, I wasn't aware that the, uh, the cliff had fallen down. I didn't hear it. Okay. Anyway, David is a leading internet marketer. He's based in uh, West Sussex. Uh, you can find him on the internet at davidrosam.com. All right. Uh, Tim Capper is CEO of onlineownership.com, uh, winner of many awards and the best local <laughs> SEO agency for Middle Earth. And. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's based in Corby, about 100 miles north of London. Um, Masataki Wasa is web... Oh, he's the, Tim uh, is also a Google product expert in the Google My Business community. And Masataki Wasa is a Google product expert uh, in the uh, AdSense uh, community. Uh, he's based in Wimbledon uh, uh, in uh, the cold and frosty suburbs of London. All right, um, we have uh, 15 questions uh, in tonight's list. Let's have a look at um, some of them. Um, I'll try and get that on the screen in a second, but first of all, I'll, I'll read it out. This one from Chris Green, uh, who's uh, been a good friend of uh, WCA Questions. Um, it's titled A, rel sponsored on links versus uh, having a no link attribute. Um, Chris said, hi guys, uh, is there any research into uh, rel sponsored on links versus uh, no link uh, uh, attribute, uh, e.g. normal uh, uh, do follow? Um, can anybody say which is more powerful? We've just been joined by Richard Hearn. Richard um, is um, you in Australia or Thailand, Richard? Jim, if I was in Australia, I'd be sitting there with you having a drink. Okay. Well, um, Richard, uh, born in Ireland, um, lives in Thailand and mainly looks after tier one sites uh, here in Australia. Um, and we're just on question one in, in the run list. Do you need a link, Richard? Uh, please. Let me find it. And how are we all? Hopefully everyone is, is in good form. Yes, mate. I'm epic. That's good to hear. Yeah. Better than last week. <laughs> no, I'm still squeezing the pus. You're not oozing nice. anyway. That's the main thing. <laughs> no, I'm still, I'm still squeezing the pus. No, 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 no. Generally, <laughs> people are going to be like, did he, did he, "What did he just say?" Thank <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> Oh dear. We can some, we're talking about uh, a uh, rel sponsored on links um, versus the no link attribute. Which is more powerful? Have you figured out what the question is? That's all I have. Um, Michael Martin has said there's, there is no reliable method to determine something like that. Uh, Google implies they'll make it the decision about how to handle these links on a site-by-site -site basis. 
Yeah, I mean, you'd have to guess that the that a clean link with without rail sponsored would have more. All other things been equal, it would be more powerful than one that has rail sponsored on it. Certainly for Google, you'd assume so. No, what are you guys thinking? Yeah, I mean, theoretically, um, I just wonder what the adoption rate is. So, you know, in a sense, is it really useful for Google to um, use well sponsored, for instance, um, and distinguish them from normal, inverted commas, links? Because, you know, a conscious, conscientious webmaster would be doing that. But, you know, many sites would just either have really follow links everywhere or all no follow for all external links whatever the situation may be uh, that's that is granted but you have to bear in mind that google are the ones who came up with rail sponsored so if they put it out there you have to assume that, the, that they have the the wherewithal in their back end to deal with it and handle it i mean obviously we don't know and we'll never know but they came up with it so I suppose you probably want to take them at face value that they what when that, that they do handle it as they've said they they do even though it's not not quite a binary situation based on the documents they've given out. Yeah, so I think you know if some if a link is a sponsored link, then mark it as such. I mean, I think it's a good practice anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so, in a sense, the question is not correct, is it? Because it's not about the if you like the perceived powerfulness of the link that's the question it's the nature of the link it doesn't matter how valuable the link may be if it's a sponsored link it's a sponsored link and it should be marked up as such if you're going to implement the that distinction yeah if you want to play by their rules mm. what i mean like there's a lot of the web that doesn't play by those rules like and as you get into the more competitive niches um, like I, I, I certainly know companies that like there's there's no way in hell they're going to require rel equal sponsored on stuff that maybe isn't quite sponsored, but probably there is a relationship behind the link. So yeah, I mean, just answering that question, you just say yeah, a clean link is like all things being equal. If you take a very large corpus of clean links versus a very large corpus of sponsored rel sponsored links, um, the very large corpus of clean links is going to have more power in terms of search. Than the ones that sponsored for sure yes so in a sense those who are conscientious might be losing out inverted commas yeah i i, my, I tell you what from i my best guess and sort of based on some of the sites i work with certainly in in the the high velocity sort of content sites as in in the news niche etc entertainment um they just would have used rel no follow on stuff that they were worried about and they certainly haven't updated to rel sponsored and i don't think it would make any difference like there's no real point in, in making that change i don't think what what the other thing actually do they think that rel rel no follow is the same as rel sponsored do they think it's handled differently or any thoughts well i i uh, i'm just looking at um a 10 year old page on WCA questions because I'm fairly sure I put rel stuff you on on uh, <laughs> that uh. No, I I didn't say uh, um, uh, rel stuff you. I was on uh, Dan Petrovic's uh, uh, Algaroo. Um, his image is on the front page of um, MSEO questions, and uh, I said rel equals nope no way i don't know why i did but maybe i was sober maybe i wasn't um, yep yeah, don't know anyway all right um will we call that a wrap for mr chris green yeah apparently um all right um let's uh, go on to the next I'm so excited having Richard Hearn here again. Um, Andrew Mazer asked a question titled, uh, is it wise to change the descriptions? Andrew said that I sell window blinds online 
and the descriptions are almost all the same except for the sizes. But is it wise to change the descriptions so they're a little bit different? So, so yeah, look, I mean, uh, it, it kind of makes sense uh, if they were, you know, exactly, exactly, exactly the same. Um, but you kind of also, yeah, it, it kind of would make sense. And you are going to slightly describe it anyway, because, I mean, uh, so except for the size. Okay, I was sort of thinking your image is going to be slightly different also because of the color, uh, texture. Um, it's like all the size except for the size. Okay, so to be fair, if everything was the same except for the size, I don't know why you would have multiples. Shouldn't you just be able to have one blind, click down, select the size I want, select the amount I require, and check out? Right? So, look, if you've already gone down the road of creating all these things, yeah, okay, fine. Um, but Google's going to have a very hard time deciphering which to display when and where. They will probably just pick one out of your entire selection and only ever display that based upon search queries. Um, I would certainly look at possibly a nice little e-com kind of uh, page where you would have uh, a lot more content based upon the blinds in itself and then allow the user you would have different images obviously in different color i suppose in different I, I don't, you know i don't know but you just said all the same except i would probably just have a really good singular page for your blinds and then the user can select the sizes and the quantity they want one page because on that singular page you can potentially embed video of it opening and closing. You can embed video on installation. You can embed, you know what I mean? You can make that the seriously freaking epic singular page because it is a blind page, right? Now, Andrew, I don't know if you've neglected to say you've obviously got different materials and like that's a different issue because then you've got different, you can have different things. But if what you're saying at face value is you only have one product and then it's sizes, then I would seriously consider making one epic blind page rather than pissing about with all sorts of different descriptions and shit all over the place and trying to make a different image on the same thing multiple times over. It, it, that makes no sense. Hey, I think so that's, that's a, great, a great idea, Tim. You, you should be a consultant. <laughs> Damn it! I knew I was going wrong somewhere, Jim. <laughs> no, I, wonder, right. I wonder though, is is I mean, we one we don't know how many different blinds he has, so we don't know whether it's like two or three or two or three hundred, and that makes a difference. And then yeah, yeah, definitely. We, we might want to think like he he when you work in a business you tend to get blinkered by what you're looking at all the time so he's probably just he may think that his blinds are all the same except for the sizes but actually the people who are buying his blinds might have a very different view of the world and they might be looking for blinds in different use cases or in different rooms or in different you know whether it's a, for a window or for a door and there could be also opportunities there to sort of try to put himself in the shoes of users and his buyers and see is he actually is he actually building a site that that aligns with what his users are searching for and what they're looking for online and that might be an opportunity for him also but really he like the answer to this question really depends on how many of these pages he has if it's a few yeah he can either just maybe rewrite them or see if he can put them into one really great page like tim said if it's hundreds or like if there's a large number, he may want to rethink like why does he have all these pages? Um, and it's probably not doing him, it's not probably not helping him from a search perspective. He should have a page maybe for each sort of product that people are searching for. 
And otherwise, you should have facets on the page that allow people to select the size or the color or whatever it might be. But but I'm guessing there's probably opportunity to be thinking about what rooms do they go into? Do they go in windows? Do they go in doors, et cetera? And start thinking about how people are using his blinds and how they might be searching for them and use any tools you can to find, to find out what people are searching for. Because they're probably not just searching for blinds. <laughs> You'll probably find they're searching for a bit more than that. And the longer tail might be where he actually picks up a lot of uh, business or traffic. Yeah, totally. Totally. Have you guys ever put up a blind? Yeah. It, it, is it not the, 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 the nastiest piece of work that, that you know, I mean, they inflict on us? Fucking I mean, horrendous, man. The, the, the salesman tells ah. the good lady that this is easy, and and so you know you're a, look like an idiot if, if you can't. No, I don't, no, no, no. I, I don't think putting it up's the issue for me. That I always find that like the the pucker factor is getting the the HD whatever freaking drill bits because. Um, in the newer newer houses, it's the me it's metal it's metal plinths that 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 you use. So I don't I can't tell you how many freaking drill bits I've burned through trying to just put up a <laughs> flipping blind. It's ridiculous. And then you can't just go and get the round the same straight round one. You need H E ones which fit in with the lock and it's the hang on part. hang on. Did you have planning permission when you did all that? <laughs> You may have to reinstate it to the state it was in before you started if you didn't. <laughs> hey, Richard, did you notice my wall's grey? It looks very grey with this camera. It could be my yeah. monitor also, though. I don't know. No, no, no. The wall's grey. It's changed from white to grey. I thought, you oh, know, it is grey. Sorry, I thought, you said, I, I thought you said, did you see it's green? I was going to say it looks very grey to me. No, 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 no. It's there to accentuate my... You could, good you could be in Belgium. Belgium is a terribly grey country, yeah? <laughs> if you ever go to Belgium, people will tell you, like, when you drive through, it is incredibly grey. Yeah, Anyhow. like the Lake District. Anyhow, on that, on that note. Let's move on. Um, number two uh, <laughs> is done, and we're looking for number three. This one from Madiha Ahmed. Um, it's titled Creating Backlinks for Procurement Agency for Defence. Um, Madaha said, uh, so a client just approached me out of nowhere and he wants me to create backlinks for his website, which is a directory itself for suppliers of aircraft, seagoing vessels, ammunition, personally, personal military equipment, and that kind of stuff. I'm kind of overwhelmed now. Um, any ideas uh, what should be the, the strategy for creating uh, backlinks uh, of a procurement agency for defence? P.S. Don't start bashing me with that. I don't know anything about SEO and about to uh, ruin the client's website as I won't take the project until I'm clear about it. Who's going to start bashing? <laughs> <laughs> Well, my dear, now, now, my son, let me tell you. <laughs> no, okay, so the way I would look at, so it's a directory. So the traditional avenue of actually leveraging suppliers, things like that, reviews is non-existent because you're literally just a directory. So <clears throat> off the top of my mind, just having a quick think about this, was creating like a really badass kind of uh, <clears throat> sort of logo for the directory um uh you could also obviously then take it down the road of like you know that these are legitimate suppliers etc etc or businesses but that's another story but i would say creating some kind of really epic logo that users could embed onto their site. You know, obviously, you would need to use real sponsored. Um, that, that 
<laughs> Obviously, that's the way no, to go. I mean, no, come on now. If you're going to be sarcastic, you have to make sure that people understand that you're being sarcastic because people could actually go out and put a lot of money into doing this project and actually put REL sponsored on those on those badges, which would be an incredible <laughs> waste of money and resources. So Tim has been, yeah, he's been funny here. Don't don't do this at home, please. Mm, okay. Um, so that would be my first thought because you're not selling anything, you're not providing anything. Do you see what I mean? So you need to leverage the people that are using the site, the directory somehow. So that would be my first thought. My next thought is right, you're selling military shit, and people that typically are in that space love badass stuff. Like, I just, we can watch it all day. So, um, I'm thinking, you, and this would take time, but you could sit there and actually use it as a strategy in terms of longer tail to get people to come in. But also, obviously, you know, it would uh, also work as a kind of a on page, you know, creating epic content for LinkedIn. But checking out these directories, like, I don't know, just like you say, someone's selling chips, like, Let's find some super duper, you know, like kind of ship with 5,000 horsepower that's got GPMG mounted, uh, you know, and like, you know, then you just go and take an image from, you know, have those things that they use within the, in, in, in the SEAL teams and you can merge it together and make, you know, you can just, I, I don't know, is someone selling a freaking nuclear bomb? Like, let's get, make, make it epic, you know, just, Go and find epic stuff that those people are selling, create stuff on yours and go like, hey, and you can, you know, contact them direct from our directory, link in there, link in there, link in there. Um, so the, the, the chance of some brilliant content is, is there. My other thought would be once you've made yourself and your logo like badass, uh, you could start looking at sponsorships or doing some stuff with Black Rock for Coffee, they brilliant. I mean, there's, I mean, that whole veteran-led business um, equipment uh, stuff kind of scene out in the states is is massive. I mean, Black Rifle Coffee um, recently mounted a Gatling gun onto a freaking Tesla, right? Uh, I mean, epic. Like, who would ever do something like that? You know what I mean? And this is the kind of thing, if you want to make this work in terms of that kind of space, and in the States, it's, you know, these guys are really thinking massive now. And there's a lot of opportunity to brand yourself with them as long as your brand fits within what they're doing. Um, so there's a lot of food for thought there. Go and check out that space in the States. It's massive. It's badass and it's 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 epic. So, I mean, you know, the best SEO link building thing would be to take an even bigger Gatling gun and put it onto <laughs> put it onto Elon Musk's freaking new truck. Like that would be the best link building strategy, like on the planet. But you would need some 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 capital for that. I think that last comment is the bit where it, the bubble might burst, Tim. I think you know all those memes where you've got client expectations and client budget. <laughs> yeah. I think the sort of stuff that you're just talking about is the sort of stuff that defense contractors might get the budget to do. <laughs> but bear in mind that this guy in the question said that someone came out of the blue and has approached him to do some back to create backlinks. So it's a link building job. Um yeah. Do you think the budget would sustain some of those? <laughs> Damn. I, I was, do, you, uh, do you know what? You know what the, but the, the, what you started with, though, the badge, okay? The badge is a good idea, all right? It's, uh, you always start with your own network, I think. So, like, creating a badge, but, like, obviously, you have, it has to be done in a good way. The site has to be trustworthy and credible and all the rest of it. And if you can do that and get some links from some of the people who are listing on his site, and maybe see if you can get some content out of them to actually some to actually start creating some content which is like evergreen content in some way that will be the way to go about it so 
certainly start with what you what you've got and the network you've got and see if you can leverage that and then if you've got a huge budget you can just come back to tim and he's going to give you all these epic tesla and gatling gun ideas and he'll give them to you for free just so he's in the video okay but there has yeah. to be hot chicks in there as well okay that's, <laughs> that's going to be in his right yeah? hot chicks and a lot of freedom <laughs> there you go jim this show is going to go down in history. The worst, the worst of your 411 ever. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go to the next, will we? Well, we just say the last thing to say is uh, you can see Michael Martinez has been kindly, he's kindly added quite a long uh, answer in there um, to, to the person who asked the question. I would always pay attention to what, what the answer he's given you. Uh, he knows what he's talking about most of the time, so. Yeah. Yes, I, I, I really should acknowledge uh, people like Michael Martinez, Ma, uh, Ma, Michael Stricker, uh, uh, Brendan Malone, uh, people who um, spend their time um, answering questions as soon as they're uh, dropped into the uh, Damasio questions uh, community. On Facebook, um, and they make uh, Demisier questions such a, a valuable resource. Um, uh, it's really a, their contribution is really uh, appreciated. He he's got a really good idea actually there about the 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 contracting side of it. it it's quite tricky, and I'd say it would require someone with a lot of knowledge of that industry and the the contracting side of it. But if you build content, I, I, it's probably a few years ago, I'm sure it is now, but I remember I was doing some work for, uh, it was a, a, a HR company. And one of the companies that I looked at that were sort of semi in their niche was a tax accounting company. And they created some content. They were quite small, but they had created like hundreds and hundreds of really good articles about tax accounting. And they just owned that niche. And this was in the US where it's big books. Um, but certainly, if you can fill some of the gaps around that contractual stuff, not necessarily the legal area, but if you can answer a lot of that stuff with, with some good content, that could be a, a really clever idea that Michael Martinez has mentioned. Yep. All right, moving right along. We're now up to number four in our run list. This is from David Q. Borg here. Um, it's titled "Which Tags I Should Which Tags Should I Care About?" Um, David goes on to say, "I didn't really understand how to use tags when I first created my site. I have way more per post than I should, and they are just whatever words that came to mind after I wrote the post." Fair enough. Um, he said, I, I didn't realize that a post slash page was created for each and every tag used, which means now my site has uh, 600 pages uh, rather than uh, around 100 pages I expect people to actually go to. Uh, online research turns up a few recent articles or, or guidance on if, how, and to what extent SEO damage is done by deleting all the tags. I don't get amazing traffic right now, but I am um, working on it. And if there's going to be a traffic hit, I'd rather take it now before my traffic grows. Does anyone have actual experience and data to support uh, if I should leave tags alone, um, delete them, or just not add them to future posts and let them be? Um, so you're looking at you've probably read a uh, well. So, so some of the stuff you read just sounds like just sort of bad, uh, bad. But I think you need to understand how to sort of use them. <laughs> oh, the other way, and just to address you, if you can delete them, uh, the quick answer for you here uh, to tidy them up if you want to. So the go into your analytics view on all your pages surface it by tag and then you'll actually get your answer in terms of has it ever had a click right it's never had a click it's not visible in search you, 
you, you, you, you don't have a problem in deleting that. So, so that's your thing. You're just a, just a quick way. But so you can use tags very, very effectively. So you, you typically have, I don't, look, I don't know without looking at your site, but let's just say an average site that deals in one single thing specifically or one kind of niche may have within something, let's say four or five different categories for different sort of niche specific informational topics within your business. Okay. So you've got four categories. You typically only tick, you only select one per article. You can select more, but then it starts getting a bit messy. Um, so typically select the, the, the best possible category for it. Now, in an article, you can then, uh, I'll, I'll give you that in a second, Rob, I don't know why you said that, it popped up. Um, so the, the, the next thing is within, the, within your article, that is, is your writing which fits within that category. You may have another two or three kind of subcategories within that. And that's where you would use a tag. So instead of just willy-nilly chucking in, you know, um, a, a whole bunch of just freaking random words, so now you can start thinking about actually these kind of subcategories within a main topic, which is your category. Okay. And you can actually then click into that tag. You can actually optimize it. You can create, you know, um, you can add a title to it. You can add a little bit of a description to it, uh, things like that. And it would actually make useful sense, but then only obviously tag in ones or other properties that are similar. So you're creating a category and you're creating subcategories, right? Yes, an article, which is tagged into that main category and in the same subcategory technically would be duplicate content because it's displayed in two different places. It's not actually. Google can understand the use of these things, right? Google can understand the use of these things. But more importantly, you're providing a category which is visible in search about a main topic. Let's just call it uh, property investment, right? So there's a lot of kind of articles that can fit within property investment, but within property investment and the one article, something may be dealing with uh, something may be dealing with finance, something may be dealing with buy to let, something may be dealing with um, advisors, investment advisors, let's just say. I mean, those could all be categories in themselves, but I'm just saying. And specifically, if it's used or mentioned or specifically about that, you could use it as a subcategory. And those will also show up in search and can be really, really, if you think about this, really well leveraged. And they are visited and they do show up in search. So for all your 600 crappy ones, I think, I think, you know, um, a quick way for you, because you literally don't, I mean, you may have a bit of traffic on one of them. One of them may be obscure enough that actually is appearing in, in search results and people are clicking on. Quick, just have a quick look through, see what's being visited. And then what you want to do is just get rid of them or refine them. Just freaking deleting them is not going to be a problem. That, you know, um, and, you um, and then refine them and actually fine tune them and, and, and you know, do something with it. I'm going to jump in and just say the like that that's all true, but there are probably some exceptional edge cases where that might not work so well. So if you have a lot of tag pages which only have one post listed on them, and if you've got a lot of tags that only have the same post listed on them, that's not good. And I'm guessing that if you've got 100 posts and you've got 600 tags, you're going to have quite a lot of those tags are probably going to have one post on them, okay? Or they're going to have the same posts on them, or they're going to be things like plural and singular terms or tags. Um, what I would do is I would export the 600 tags from WordPress. I'd review them in Excel or something like that. 
and then I'd use a plugin. Um, I think one term management tools plugin is one that's quite good where you can merge tags. So rather than deleting them, you can actually merge them, and it will do the back end. It'll connect the posts because if you do delete stuff, um, that's probably fine also. But in some cases, you may actually leave some pages without any tags at all. So if you merge them, you're always going to end up with less, but all the pages are still going to be tagged. Um, but definitely just go through them and see. Like it, it doesn't sound like like 600 t you know terms is just doesn't sound appropriate for 100 pages in my view. And like you know, I think I mentioned on this on this post like the like tags can be a nightmare. Like I work with sites that have got like really high six digit numbers of tags because they've been online for 20 years and they're new sites that publish 40 to 50 posts a day. So they've got a lot of tags and it's a nightmare. And um, you don't want to let it get out of control because actually getting it back under control is, is very, very difficult. And there's very few tools. It's actually, there's a great opportunity for someone, some business to come along and say, we'll clean up your tags to these large new sites and use something like the WordPress API to pull out the tags and actually clean them up and semantically make them better, et cetera. Um, but yeah, if you've got a lot of tag pages with just one or two posts, um, they probably have limited or no value. And quite often it can be, you either delete them, merge them, or no index them. It'll probably be better for you because as your site grows, if you keep going, at, if you keep the levels consistent and, and you're growing, your site's going to get into a turn into a real mess very quickly. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, uh, Tim. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Linesman. Thank you, Ball Boys. Uh, here we are. The next one uh, is from Norm Sue's Amable Lewis. It's titled "What Impact Will the Use of a Target Blank Have?" Um, SEO conundrum. Um, he goes on uh, and says, uh, adding outbound, outbound links to boost uh, search engine optimization, but I don't want to lose visitors from the site. Ideally, open uh, outbound links in a new tab, um, but that opens um, security issues. Is RHEL no follow enough to allow this uh, um, securely? And what impact will the use of a target blank um, uh, have, uh, even with rel no follow, have on the SEO? Well, I multiple see. issues conflated in there. I, the security issue has nothing to do with SEO. The security issue is to, is due to the fact that when you use uh, when you open a window in this way the window you opened has got access to the window that opened it. That's the security issue. That was fi fixed with RHEL no opener. RHEL no opener has no impact on SEO. RHEL no follow does not fix the issue. Uh, RHEL no follow will mean that you're not actually passing any, any signals across the link to whatever the site is that's opened in that, in that window. Um, but this is just a conflation of issues that are not really related to SEO at all. That's, my view on that one. Thank you, Richard. The other thing I also, you know, the other thing I also want you to sort of think about is, like, you've literally said linking to sites for SEO benefit. Like, you know, you've literally read an article that says somewhere that you should, I don't know, link out to other more authoritative sites from yours because it's good for you. Uh, you know, I just chucking something in for the sake of SEO benefit. It just, you know, I hate it. It just makes no flipping sense. Tim would never do if that. If it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> the other flips are okay. Like, let's just say, like, if, like, you know, talking about new sites, you try and get a, you try and get an actual link on a new site, man. These, these, you know, new, main main mainstream news sites like getting a link out of these buckers is you know just next to impossible these days. Um, and but how do these sites have authority? So what I'm saying is, it's not about having these external links. It's about literally building your authority online. 
if it makes sense to the user because you're talking about something and you and you've provided them with as much in-depth information as you can without adding another 50,000 words onto the page, whereas you might as well create the entire guide, you could say to them, you know, uh, to, to visit the government site, send them, you know, there, or you will need to actually click to this site to actually make the application that I've just, you know, told you about. Um, it makes sense to link to them. Like, why are you going to no follow them? You know, okay, fine, no follow them. But, but, the, but the whole point here is in the whole entire spirit of the web, it's like, would somebody, if you actually provided some pretty good information and they actually linked to your site and then you saw it was a no follow, you'd be like pretty pissed because they piggyback in off, off your, you know, your content that you provided and then they decided to chuck in a no follow. So, yeah, I know, but, you know, in the spirit of actually what the whole web is about, and if you then on the flip side, if you go and think that every person out there on the planet no follows their links like overnight, you know, so like just be a decent SEO and think about things a little bit better. Okay. Any more? All right. Um, so that was number five. Here is number six on our run list from Faraz Ahmed. Um, his question is titled, they call it a backlink strategy. What do you think? Faraz said, oh, I've seen and known a few companies who call profile creation, uh, classified ads, infographic submission, uh, PDF uh, submission, image submission and their promotion as backlinks strategy, and they charge uh, considerably for it. Um, are they not obsolete? Um, what is your backseat, backlinks strategy? I don't know why I said backseat then, Tim. <laughs> Do you know what, Faraz? You have not been watching all our presentations on dumb SEO questions, because if you had watched the last four years worth of presentations, you would understand what our backlink strategy is. So take yourself off, start viewing, and come back to us in three years' time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, did, did anyone that's see the all a lot of posts? Did anyone see the comment? Sorry, go on, go on. Sorry, apologies. Uh, the comment? No, no, you go ahead. I'll, I'll say in a minute. So look, some of those at some point in time have worked. Um, and just remember, classified ads, you can do them. You just obviously should, from, from the place, um, have, have a prop, proper tag coming back to you. Like, uh, what's it? Uh, sponsored, <laughs> real sponsored. Uh, in fact, most reputable, um, you know, ads, uh, wow, God, what do they call it now? Um, that's yeah, nice. as an advert, 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 uh, advertorials, 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 loads of newspapers, magazines still offer these. Um, in fact, there was a big one where ne uh, net florist, what are they called? Flor uh, Interflora got slammed a few years back, didn't they? For these um, uh, advertorials. Um, because they weren't using Rel no follow at the time, but now we have uh, the you know Rel sponsored and most most places. So there are you know within the hat there are a few little legitimate kind of things like but PDF submission now nah, not so much. But you know a lot of places and a lot of big companies out there still have these massive PDFs of really high technical shit that just sit on their side. And I'll tell you what the links to them are mega. Um, so you know this there are some things in there that you can still use my backlink strategy for the last uh, 10 years has been essentially working on a site making it better for a user making the information easier for a user to find and providing 
every single possible piece of information that a user can query regards to that product, business, or service that that site is selling. And that's it. So literally every search query that a person makes online, boom, there's that company. And, and, and that's it's just as simple as that. No, 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 that's my backlink strategy. Thank you, Tim. What, what I was going to mention about the comment was that there was a guy, Josh Levinson, he, he wrote, it's not about the tactic, it's about the execution. And, and that was just a perfect sort of way to answer this question, that, that anything can work if it's executed very well. So that's probably the thing to bear in mind. Next, that was mentioned on the um, on, on the uh, um, Facebook group, wasn't it? Yeah, um, yeah that's it. If you so in, the, in the answers, there, it's there. Yeah, and you know that's so true. That's so true. Like, uh, I mean, these companies that are doing it like this in terms of the customer ads, for you know, they aren't specifically they sending or they're submitting your stuff to really low, you know, low value places. But even just talking about that image, you know, like a, a singular image executed well <laughs> is, is massive. I mean, I don't know if you saw that ad campaign that was by an Italian company and they literally did, did, did a drawing um, it was so 3D like of a submarine coming up through the um, St. Mark's, um, Mark's Square in Venice. And oh, come on, you know, like the most simple thing, actually, in terms of getting the artist to draw that, probably not a lot. Um, but obviously, the, the images then went global, went viral. Um, and that image will be forever associated with a brand, it'll be forever, you know, obviously potentially linked to so yeah totally it's about the strategy yeah for sure yeah no, I, I think it, it, it's it's um, it's about authority make yourself uh, an authority on something and, and people will send links for, um, uh, to you to describe it to somebody else and that's the best kind of link um, yeah anyway Let's look at number seven on our run list. We're halfway there. Jordan Wilson said, um, what do you wish you knew on your first gig? Jordan said, hey, all, I'm just starting out in search engine optimization. I landed a freelance account with a local historical hotel for Google My Business and visibility improvements. What are some things you've learned along your way that you uh, wish you knew on your first gig. Right, right. Holy shit, Jordan! You've just picked, you've just picked the most difficult kind of thing to 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 cut your teeth on, which is hotels, because they are so throttled in lo local search. It's just freaking unbelievable. Um, well, it's like, what did I wish I knew on my first gig? Well, that's kind of a bit weird because I guess most of us here started when you could still pay um, Yahoo for first page, uh, first <laughs> where you could still bid on on, on organic positions. Um, so yeah, that's quite irrelevant. So I would say, what I wish I knew on my first gig for hotels. Um, uh, yeah, the first thing is not to waste too much time trying to rank for hotels plus location. That's your biggest thing, which your client is going to want, and you need to explain to them, sorry, but that's your online travel agents, which dominate that. Uh, Google changed the algo in late 2018 to make sure that your local hotel doesn't rank there. Um, so you want to start working on your internal services, which you can rank for. Hotel rooms, accommodation, weddings, the venue. If you're corporate um, and you do functions, 
concentrate on those pages. Uh, um, those that you know that that's that's where you want to attract people in. Um, uh, images on GMB. Don't submit the same images to OTAs as your GMB. Keep them separate. Um, understand what customers come to that hotel. Are they are they business in that area? Is it for business? Is it for pleasure? Um, uh, is it a massively heavily influenced wedding venue? Is that your main thing? Understand who the customer is or the mix of the customer. Create content um, around that for those customers. So what I mean is uh, if they're coming for weddings, right? Uh, I don't know what country you're in, but so for example, uh, in the UK, if somebody's coming to a wedding, you can, some hotels are licensed venues uh, with, you know, for, for weddings and others, not necessarily, you still have to travel out to a registrar or to a, create a guide, create a guide to prospective people coming in terms of, and also to selling it, create a guide on uh, where the local wedding venues, the registrars, where the actual churches who to get hold of, how to arrange that, what are the licenses needed. Um, uh, if it's for primarily tourism, where are the best places to eat, drink, go out, good for kids, not good for kids. But you're like, you have a massive wealth. Understand who, you, you know, your mix of traveler is, come into the property and then create all that content around it. Because ranking for hotel plus location is not gonna happen. You have to get your customers in other ways now. Um, so, so yeah, that, that would be my biggest takeaway. Did you notice the word he mentioned and it was a historical hotel? I don't know what that means in particular, but if, if there's some reason that this hotel is used, whether, like, like Tim was saying, like if there's some connection to what the, the, the visitors are doing, that they can, they can provide and, and promote content around that purpose, that might be useful as well. That's totally. Like, that just gave, yeah. Totally just gave me in, like like bouncing off from what Richard just said. So like, when you say historical, you know, depending what that is, but like can you leverage that even further? Can you know, can that particular part of the hotel, if it's like, I don't know, some original side of it is 1920s, art deck, like whatever, gothic or what, you know, can you leverage that side better? Can it be I wouldn't say because maybe not. It depends, but could you even get that on a on a some kind of tour list, some kind of tour list with some kind of people that are into whether it's <coughs> art, some you know whether it's art deco. Can you get little tours coming in? Can you leverage giving them a discount on teas, coffees, drinks um, when they bring their ten their ten guys up through the the East Tower because that's like the, the Art Deco or uh, you know like depending what the historical connotation is you can leverage some of that another quick thing just off the top of my head here is make sure every single one of them that come and visit have the Google Maps app on their phone because all of those people mm -hmm. all of a sudden ch chucking mm -hmm. up at the hotel mm -hmm. all of a sudden you have got like the huge potential for Google travel and appearing in uh, things to do in a day um, day day trip suggestions because if Google's all of a sudden got 20 bulks of 20 people turning up every other day they like fucking holy shit and then they will start including you in Google travel so oh and that's another thing get you know dive into Google travel and get to know it because that is your biggest competitor thank you Tim that's, a, that's a good idea also the travel like the, the the getting people to start up their maps you know what you can say to them here's a map of the area and you get them to open the map while they're in the hotel somehow whether it's a qr code or whatever it is when they're eating their breakfast have something on the table ask them are they interested in x or y and open get have them open scan a qr code that opens their maps when they're sitting in your in your restaurant and ping 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 to google yeah totally i just i don't understand what people are i mean literally i don't understand what people don't do more of this like 
you know, you set up your Wi-Fi, your Wi-Fi hotspot. You can actually set your Wi-Fi as soon as people log in to have it logged in. I know, in and I don't days, understand why you know, people are leveraging the shit out of this. Like yeah. we know for a fact, like there was that thing in the one in the in the article, and ironically, so many local SEOs shared the article about how one guy with a little trolley with like 50 phones in literally yeah. shut down that main road in London. And I'm like, you know, literally the possibilities here are screaming at you, mm. literally screaming at you to put your business on the freaking map, like to skyrocket it right up there. If all of a sudden you have 50 phones turning up at a barber through a day, and then the next day you've got another 50 turning up and another 50 turning up. Yes, you would need a lot of SIM cards. Do you see what you, do you know what I mean? Like, I don't understand why people, look, I know in the States there are companies out there that will literally drive mm -hmm. 2,000 phones to your business depending on how many days that you uh, book the service for. And I, I'm just saying, come on, people, wake up. Yeah, I'm, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking Jordan was like, Jesus Christ, why did I even ask the question? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we've uh, covered off number seven on our run list. Uh, uh, if there are no objections, we'll go on to the next. Okay. All right. Uh, number seven on our, oh, sorry, number eight on our run list uh, from Alina Volpato. Um, it's titled, I cannot find keywords to optimize my website, to which I say rubbish. Um, hello everyone, I'm new here and I have a burning and probably dumb SEO question. I cannot find keywords to optimize my website and social for, because all the tools that I use give back zero results for what I think yeah, uh, interesting keywords. I'm an Italian freelance translator um, who specializes um, uh, in the translations, uh, in translations for marketing. Optimizing for online translator is out of the question as that keyword leads to a free online translation tools like Google or translation tools like Google Translate. Freelance translator is taken by agency or platform. So another no, no go. Um, uh, let me just see what was said there. Sorry about that, guys. I lost my place. One must go with more specific keywords such as Italian marketing translations or Italian marketing translator. But when one does that, is the result and uh, Elena gives us a link which I won't try to, to copy out um, but you'll find it on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group um, and Elena wants to know she goes on to ask what uh, can I do well I think the natural person here to answer this is is Masataki who is a translator but just before that, I mean, I think you're looking at this a completely wrong way. Because um, you're just thinking you're looking at, at uh, keywords. But there is so much content that you can, you can literally make yourself like the most dominant force in Italian translating. You can answer things like, um, you know, how can I translate uh, my emails from Italian to English? <laughs> how how to say hi in Italian in Google Translate. You can literally answer every single freaking question about Italian translation out there. Make yourself the, the most dominant go-to person for Italian translation. Anyway, Masataki is the man to speak to. Yeah, no, I agree with um, Tim, actually. Um, and, but I think your target keywords will be the language combination in the first place. So you're translating between Italian and some other language. Those are the two. So people aren't necessarily looking into, you know, people aren't just going to search for Italian translators. They're looking for people, you know, translators for Italian, English, or vice versa, for example. Now, depending on the query, it may be sort of 
apparent or inherent. So, you know, if there is a um, search engine user in Britain or the US who has set everything to English and only reads English sites and then types in Italian translator, then that person, I think Google would understand a query as someone looking for um, Italian English translator. Now, so that's first thing I would do. So, you know, make sure that you have a good amount of portfolio information, sample translations, for example, between two languages or you know, whatever many languages that you work on, work on. And then you specify the field. So marketing, but what kind of marketing are you talking about? Are you talking about B2B or B2C? Do you specialize in, in particular sectors? Because, you know, marketing itself is a huge area and the amount of knowledge you have to have specialist knowledge you have to have to translate documents adequately um, in let's say the car industry that doesn't necessarily translate into say food for instance so i think what you have to do is you have to really um put out what you are specialist in and then try to corner that market as much as possible rather than trying to rank for everything that will come under translation or translation between Italian and whatever language. Because I think as an individual, you really can compete against the agencies um, and other established sites. You have to really go for that specialist niche market that you occupy yeah i, th I think there's uh, i think there's a lot, lot of uh lot of sensible stuff there from us it's it, you you've got to do your before you get into doing your seo you need to do your basic marketing you need to understand what you do you need to understand how your your business works um who buys your uh, your, your 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 services. How do they? What do they use your services for? Um, you know, you're you're not looking for for huge numbers of of, of search searches on particular uh, key phrases like online translator or freelance tra translator. You know, they've all been done. You don't need all that all that uh, all that traffic to make it uh, work for you. Make your website work for you. So you, you need to you need to grab your under you need, you need to get get your understanding of your your business uh, first, and then move on to your uh, to, to your key phrase research uh, if you're going to go down that route. Um, and then you need not worry about the fact that when you use a tool um, that uh, it's coming out as zero. Uh, zero searches uh most tools don't um um most tools the numbers of searches you get um aren't very reliable should we say at low numbers um the very fact that people are searching on a particular key phrase even if it comes up as zero uh zero volume um they're of use to you if they fit with your business um yeah that, that's what i would add to it thank you david thank you mr Taki. can i add just a, a slightly different angle on this one um i've been lucky or unlucky or i don't know to work with quite a few big b2b global companies that do a lot of translation work because they they publish in a lot of different languages um I, i've never actually heard of a marketing translator and i'm curious to, to, to ask the question, could it be that this person is more like a copywriter than a, than a translator? That it is translation, but they're actually translating into very, very good marketing copy. And could it be that they actually need to position themselves more as an Italian copywriter than a translator? Because I know the big companies that I've worked with, they work with global translation agencies. And these translation agencies, they're not 
they don't specialize in B2B or in marketing. They, they tend to specialize in, in translation. Um, I'm not saying that there aren't marketing translators. Maybe there are. I don't know. But um, it, it, it might just be that they want to position themselves more as a copywriter than a translator. And that, yeah. that might get them somewhere also with this. Yeah. The word here is localization. Yeah. Um, you know that that's sort of where you straddle between translation and copywriting um um because essentially you work with uh, sometimes with slogans and catch copies and all of that um so yeah i mean if if um if they're doing that then yeah i would stress that localization element um and yeah you really need portfolio out there um if you can um sort of have that publicly done obviously a lot of times you know you can't do that because it's all it all goes to the client um but if you can demonstrate that you have successfully localized certain things that's going to that's going to stand you out and also localization won't be won't be competing with translation as a keyword and you won't be competing with those sort of free tools etc that that were a problem so i mean there is certainly a keyword that this this person should go away and consider is localization and also is there an italian translation of the word localization that might actually be easier to rank for than the english term thank you richard all right, so let's move on to number nine on our run list. Norman Butt said, I want to target a different language speaking users. Um, I, wonder, I wonder, is he looking for an Italian? <laughs> Norman said, hello all, my client started a new website in English, but he wants to target different language speaking users as well, like Spanish, Chinese, Tagalog, etc. Can you please tell me what tips and tricks I sh should I use for foreign language speaking users for ranking uh, in uh, organic um, results? The, the, the best advice, sorry, I'm going to jump in. I know Tim was going to come in. The best advice you can all ever give somebody who wants to publish in different languages is to always keep a single language per page and never mix languages on pages. So if you want to translate content, make sure that you put the translated content on a different page than the page it starts with. That's just the only thing I'm going to say there. Yeah, my, my biggest takeaway also is don't be under the, don't be under the, you know, sort of, uh, guys that okay I get a lot of traffic to this English page and I'm just going to have them translated um, it doesn't really work like that in the sense that yes you can do it that way but they may disappoint you in terms of traffic purely because um, you've translated the title you've translated obviously the content but none of that actually matches up what that user in that language would search for. So your translator should also be able to ideally um, think for themselves and then repurpose that content into better um, for the actual language target market because translating something directly doesn't always actually translate to what users in that language are searching for. So don't use an automatic WordPress plugin. Uh, no. <laughs> and, and don't just directly go and get like a translator because they will literally translate it. And from a local perspective for that market, uh, they may not actually be searching for what that was translated into. Local, I think... Localization, yeah, I th bear in mind, very, very expensive. Yeah, 
Yeah, I was going to say it's called localization translation. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Richard. Thank you all. Um, let's hang on, uh, hang on. What, no, no. Masataki is the translator. Yeah, we need some like professional input here. <laughs> exactly. I think you really need to work with. I think um, a group of people in an agency or group of people because um, a translator will do the job of translate you know, translating, and you have to ensure that the translated document makes sense for that market. And that may be because there are different laws applicable in that place, for instance, or it might be culturally different. So there are different expectations. Um, you know, you might want to change the tone of the text. And it's something that might be friendly and familiar would work in one market, but not in another. It's these things you have to think about. And to do that, you do need someone who does specialize in uh, localization, as has been mentioned. Yeah, exactly, Mr. Taki. All right, uh, let's go to number 10. Kunjal Chohan uh, uh, asked a question that's titled International uh, Search Engine Optimization Query. Kunjal said, or he went on to say, let's say that the homepage is domain.com slash EU. Uh, this carries uh, domain.com as a canonical tag uh, instead of a self-referencing one. And domain.com from canonical, when clicked, geo redirects the user to his country's version, which is probably not a good idea. Um, he said, so if an Australian accesses domain.com slash EU and clicks uh, on a uh, canonical link, uh, from the Chrome extension, he will be redirected to domain.com slash au. And this means that all canonical tags uh, contain 301 links. He said, I asked some experts and they said that the canonical link needed to be self-referencing for these home pages. But I have a doubt. The home page of all these versions carries the same content. Uh, so now if I put domain.com slash au as a canonical for um, domain.com slash uh, EU, uh, i.e. self-referencing then, would that not cause a duplicate content issue? What should I do here? Richard answered this question in the um, group. The, the, I think everything, not everything, but most of what they said is wrong. That's basically what I think on this. Some of the suggestions in there don't make a lot of sense. And I'm virtually certain that they won't get the outcomes they're looking for. And I think they're sort of tripping themselves up here. Um, the first thing is probably they want to ask themselves, do they really want to do international redirects? Because you know, you're relying on an IP database that very often is wrong or has a fairly high error rate. Very often people set this up in a way that it's it's sort of, it's impossible to break out of these redirects. And that can really deliver a really horrible user experience. But they have to also consider what happens to Googlebot? And what are they doing with American? So American IPs, are they redirecting to slash US? Because that's what Googlebot will see. And Googlebot will probably decide that's your home page. Um, like there's like I mean, I'm not gonna I answered the my answer was very long. I tried to take it point by point. And hopefully they'll think about what they're trying to do and they'll they will think about what's 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 better for UX. How can they do give up provide a better user experience while getting people to the right page for their language? And the other thing I'd say is like take a look at hreflang because that might actually solve a lot of the problems that I think this person is trying to solve for. Yeah, exactly. And there's so many things that are somewhat unclear. The first one is Chrome extension. I'm not so sure what that refers to. Yeah. 
Um, and yeah, I, I think Richard has these, but uh, and why would you 301 redirect in the scene? If, even if you were to go down this route, why would you use 301? Because that doesn't make sense. Because, yeah. you know, the EU page is the right one for EU visitors, AU page is the right one for the Australian visitors, so and so forth. Um, yeah, like Richard said, I think, I think he's creating a lot of problems for himself by doing this. Um, yeah, d don't do a 301 when you're doing this, by the way. Like, that's that's a big no-no. Like, do this with a 302 if you're going to do it. Um, and, and the reason is that if Google is getting redirected with a 301, well, they're probably going to say, okay, well, this is a 301, so what we, what we requested doesn't doesn't exist at that early. So you may be sort of removing one of your, your home pages from search results, and I don't think that's what this person wants to do. To be honest with you, I think if they just don't do any of these geo redirects and have a good internal navigation and some good messaging to users, it'll have a much better outcome. Yeah, I think I think um, yeah, you, know, you should let the you should let the visitor decide in a sense as well. Um, um, you, know, you hope that they land on the inverted commas crack and you know, the the correct page first. Um, but always give the visitor to choose to choose the correct one for them. Um, so yeah, I think I think this joke <sighs> redirecting. I you know, I'd forget about it. It, it. it was it will save a lot of problems and potential headaches. And as for as search engines are concerned, I don't sure hreflang use that to ensure that the correct version is displayed to the right people. A good example, by the way, if you're looking for it, is Amazon. I'm not sure Amazon, I'll probably go and look and they won't do it anymore. But Amazon always, what they used to do was, if you went to any of their country sites and you were in a different country, which was a, which which they had a site for, they gave you a nice message at the top saying, we noticed that you're on amazon.co.uk uh, do you know that we have Amazon in, Ger in Ger you know Amazon Germany in English, and they'll there'll be a nice easy link for you to get to the exact page you're looking for on Amazon.de in English. So they're always a good example to use to say, well, look, could you do it like Amazon? Because you know Amazon tests everything. Like if Amazon are doing it, they're doing it because it makes them more money. So yeah. they're always a good a good website to look at in terms of. If you obviously if you're e-commerce, but to look at to see what's the best way of doing stuff, and you know that whatever they do, it's done because it makes more money. Yeah, exactly. I mean, just imagine a situation that you know, because of COVID, we aren't traveling. But let's say you are on you know in another country, um, because of work or for leisure, or whatever, and you want to order something to be delivered to home while you are traveling. And then you try to access the site, and that site is always going to send you to a local version, even though you want to order from your home country's website so that the you know, the thing can be delivered. You're going to lose that customer because that customer is going to be frustrated. You know, I want to go to the home version, but you are redirecting me to the local version and which I just happen to be visiting. Okay. Have we covered this one? Okay. Number uh, number eleven on the run list, Christian E V asks a question titled Are backlinks specific for each page linked? Um, he goes on to say, uh, or oh, will quality backlinks for, um, for example, uh, domain.com uh, also be positive for all subpages? Um, for example, um, uh, domain.com slash page one. Boy, oh boy, I don't know. Um, 
I see Perry Bernard has said both. Um, a typical link distribution is a weight towards the root or home page. Um, but often uh, specific pages might earn a bunch of links when others don't. It all depends on what you're doing to earn them. The, the site as a whole will benefit uh, in a small part from any quality link shared to any page. Um, he said, I never use Moz, but I believe this is their algorithm for page authority and, and domain authority. Uh, and of course, they are trying to correlate uh, that with Google's view of links. Um, it, it, it's obviously not the same as Google, though, uh, because no one can tell you for sure. I think you, you, what, what Michael Martinez is, has written there, even in just what you can see there, makes perfect sense that signals pass in and signals pass out. So links to one page are going to be passed out along the links from that page to other pages. So that's why the answer to the question is both. Mm -hmm. I'll just read the first paragraph of Michael's answer. Um, he said, the way a page rank like algorithm must work uh, is that the link value is distributed virally, document to document. You can't have a site-wide valuation. Yeah. But people often forget that Google doesn't rank sites. Uh, Google ranks pages. Uh, you know, th th like historically they've ranked pages, but you know, over time they've built more and more of these algorithms that, you know, they look they look a lot like they're they're measuring something at a site level, and you know, if a, if it walks like a duck, you know, and it talks like a duck, it probably is a duck, you know. So I think while they do rank a page, you know, there's too many there's too many signals and variations that seem to be coming in that are site wide or site section wide. Like you see it all the time. A lot a lot of the stuff they're going at with user experience. You know, it's not just about a page. Thank you, Richard. Uh, any more on this one? Uh, direct your attention to Michael Martin is the uh, excellent answer on it uh, can be seen on the dumb SEO questions Facebook group. Number 12 on our run list uh, again from Faraz Ahmed. Uh, he said, What does content farms mean in search engine optimization? Uh, isn't it like a private blog network? What's the difference? I think to, for me, the, the, the term content farms, uh, it, just, it, it, it just seems like a horrible outcome. That's all you can see. I think there, there are two... Uh, two variations on content farms, but basically a content farm um, produces loads and loads of very low quantity um, content. Um, and generally they, um, they use people who don't write very well and cannot um, command a very high uh, fee for their for their content. Um, content farms, from a writer's point of view, can sometimes just be a um, a content agency that pays very very little for their um, for their words. Um, a content farm can also be a um, a um, a site that uh, that pays very very little and. Uh, and publishes it on that same site. Um, whichever way the, the the thing is, it's um, it's low quality content um, being um, churned out either to uh, uh, either to con oneself as an owner of the the, the site, or um, uh, for the people who buy the. The, the low quality content from the contents of um, farms. 
um, it's not like a PBN. You need um, you need more sites than one for a PBN, um, and there are certain situations where a PBN is a is a legitimate collection of uh, of websites rather than something that uh, is sold to uh, be being part of a PBN is sold to some sucker who uh, has just started off in the website ownership world. I think that's it. I Thank you, David. <laughs> Any more volunteers? Stay away from that. All right. So, number um, 13 on our run list, David Bohr here. Um, he said that I want my Google My Business page to move up in the rankings. He said, I helped a friend uh, start a business and I have his uh, normal web domain pointing to a Google business page. Um, with reviews, he has seen more calls for business, but I was wondering if there was a guide um, you recommend uh, that has proven useful in helping move a Google My Business page move up in the rankings. But things like um, adding um, uh, more pictures and, and posts, etc., cetera, uh, within the My Business page. Um, does anyone have experience with toying with it and seeing results uh, seemingly based on the changes made? Thanks. Yeah, there's loads of... Um you know, how to uh, optimize uh, GMB. Typically, you would do that with the website also. Um, <clears throat> um, but yeah, you know, there's, uh, there's, there's loads of guides. Um, I have one on my site, online ownership. I've published guides on SEMrush. Just search Google My Business Guides, SEMrush. Um, <laughs> Online ownership, uh, Moz. I mean, loads of them. White Spark. Um, yeah, yeah. There, there, there's loads of there's lo loads of them out there. Um, <sighs> things I would concentrate on is one optimizing the site for local, because you know your site uh, links and, and it works. Uh, the the two work in tandem. The site uh, works in tandem with your GMB. Um, G, uh, Google My Business also machine learns uh, at the same time. Uh, posts, things to remember, create, use, think of posts as searchable queries. So I don't know what, you know, the business was, but, um, you know, you can actually, um, you can you can create a title, just create a title, then a little bit of context, whether it's, be a, it's about a service, something that you've just installed, uh, whether it's a product, but in fact, you can use product pages for that, um, you know, uh, and, and link to the proper one. Uh, the next thing I would also do is just remember, don't forget your UTM tracking so that you can actually attribute your work to it. You can see which posts are working in terms of analytics and GMB. Uh, don't trust any of the insights uh, because that's what, you know, they, they're all completely wrong. They are getting better, but they are, are completely wrong. Um, and that's why you need to use UTM tracking. Um, yeah, there's, you know, there's, there's a whole load. Images, definitely images sell. Um, images work well, especially, you know, if you've got a product, like if you're just a corner shop, uh, images like uh, how many times can you take a picture of your little corner shop, you know, in the stacked shelves. Uh, in that instance, I would probably concentrate, I don't know if you had a unique variation of wines or, or something like that. Um, in fact, I shouldn't have used wines because that's a restricted uh, category or product. Uh, they won't let you show pictures of wine. Um, so, yeah, there's a whole lot of different ways. Yeah, and there's a lot of, lot of guides out there. Thank you, Tim. Anybody else? No, it was an excellent answer. It's pretty hard to top that. All right, let's um, go to Brenda Malone's question. Um, 
Brenda's usually answering um, all of the questions on uh, the Facebook group for Damasio questions. Um, oh, it's, it's more of a, an announcement than a question. Uh, she said Google updated their robots uh, text last night. Um, they are getting into the used car business. Um, Google just added these lines to their robots text overnight. Disallow uh, colon slash local slash cars. Uh, disallow colon um, slash local slash dealership. Um, HTTPS um, says that they do a different platform. Uh, so the .com. Yes, uh, Tim, you rescue me. Take over. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, also, Brenda, not just cars. If you scroll down, there's a lo load of local stuff. Um, dining, uh, local services. Um, those are all currently 404s. The only one that's actually currently showing anything is local cars. Um, so this this lo local is big you know local is money for google um uh you know they, they, you say money tim if you say money the googlers will be crawling in into this uh this oh oh did i say oh i can't say rev i can't say money anyway so yeah, look, I mean, just quickly looking at their local cars, basically they're creating a, um, a site, a directory, uh, exactly like Google Travel, it's, you know? So uh, what you're typically gonna find is when, um, and the way it's gonna work is when that's live, is somebody is gonna, uh, well, just look at hotels. Uh, hotels will show you exactly where this is going. So if somebody searches for a specific car or a car dealer, you will have the local pack displayed the three pack, but above it, you will then have a little finder. Like it will be a little box just above the uh, local pack where you can actually search for a vehicle, right? Uh, any type of vehicle. And then you will be taken into local forward slash local cars, which is exactly the same as Google forward slash travel, right? Once you're in there, you will be able to search location, cars, vehicles, you'll probably if you also look at the robust txt there's finance available there's a finance thing right finance it was is like flights for the travel so they will be bringing in the finance option okay so essentially once you go in you will be able to find your vehicle without ever coming out again from from just your query once you're into the local uh let's say system uh, or dashboard or directory or whatever you want to call it um it makes sense that they have all these resources available to them they have all the G dealerships in gmb the dealerships are adding either by either if they're big they're either adding all their products images price make model via the merchant center or if they're a singular just a little used car guy you can literally physically add it into your GMB into the product update, like literally individually. So why wouldn't you use all of that information and keep it all for yourself? It's their product that people are inputting it to. Once you click into it, then you can literally search for all your cars, all the locations, who's selling it, what price, click here to buy it. Oh, do you need finance? This is who you can get the finance from. <laughs> he, it, like, this is this is it's it's inevitable. Well, Google's like the seagulls in Finding Nemo. You know, they just go, mine, 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 mine. <laughs> anyway, all right. Let's uh, look at our last question for the night. So uh, this one. From, also from Perez Ahmed. Uh, thank you, Perez, for your support. Um, he, Perez said, uh, question, it's a question titled, please increase my knowledge. Um, Perez went on to say, what are other link building techniques slash strategies via content marketing besides these? 
One, skyscraper. Two, moving man method. Three, links roundup. Um, four, guest posting. Five, pillar pages. Um, please increase my knowledge. If you're going to mention any further techniques, then also um, explain or describe their execution plan, how you would execute and your approach. Um, on the uh, Facebook group, I said, um, consider that if a tactic has been around long enough to have its own name, it's not likely to be uh, very useful to you. No, that didn't move the, the needle on uh, Richard Hearn's dial. Um, <laughs> who's going to answer this? Don't fight. So, you know, for me, like, <laughs> um, so link building techniques, like <laughs> skyscraper, I mean, like let's get a grip here because those are all like literally every single one of them are manually created with the sole intent and purpose uh to manipulate um page rank right which is exactly what google's algos are created or you know that part of the algos is to detect Like, why would you even do that? Yep. And and as Jim said, like, if it's been around that long, it's got a freaking name. You can sure as well bet that it is so ineffectual because Google probably stopped started ignoring those ten years ago. But who knows? Well, Google has to lose. So if if something is beating them, obviously they're going to write it out of the... Um, yeah, and the thing is, at the end of the day, you can still just search, buy back, you know, buy links, and Google still serves ads to it. It's, you know, it's it's all of a bit of a merry-go-round. Hmm. All right. Let, 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 let me press this button, and uh, it's, yes, it's that's time again. It's thank you for watching time. Um, we've answered uh, all of the questions asked on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. We'll be back um, next week um, at the same time. And um, first, though, I, I must thank um, Richard Hearn, Masataki Waso, uh, David Razam, and Tim Kappa and Rob Mars. Um, all of you guys, um, the, your contribution to this is just so valuable. And, of course, on the um, Facebook group itself, we have Michael Martinez and Michael Stricker, Perry Bernard, uh, Brenda Malone. Uh, there are just so many people. That I'm, I, you know, I'm sure I'm missing people. Um, I was thinking the other day of Dave Elliott. Dave Elliott used to uh, provide so many answers. Um, yeah, we'll be back at the same time. Let's let me find the button to close this off. Um, there we are. How about that? I found it.